Hi friends, do you struggle with creating curly fur? Well, today I'm going to show you the easiest way to draw this texture realistically with coloured pencils. Let's go. The first thing we need to do is map out all of the shapes and curls that we can see in the reference material with a graphite pencil. You want to look at the shapes the main light and dark areas are making. And you want to think of your fur in terms of clumps and not individual strands and it will be a whole lot easier. The shapes you see won't necessarily be obvious like squares, triangles and that sort of thing. They'll be weird, rounded and kind of blob-like shapes. And I find that turning the reference image that you're using black and white helps with identifying the key light and dark tones and makes the shapes a lot more visible. We're then going to lift the graphite so it's nice and light and only just visible on the paper surface. For this I like to use a kneaded eraser as it lifts the graphite just enough so you can just about see it. Next we're going to take our first coloured pencil and with this we're going to block in those shapes. And I like to use the lightest colour, generally being a warm or cool grey or a mixture of both. And you want to block in the darkest of the shapes, so turn again to your reference and see where the darkest tones are. When you're doing this it's important to really take your time and identify the direction of the fur in your particular shape that you're working on each shape will have a different direction. The reason I like to block in shapes like this and then shade is so that it makes the texture a lot less daunting. I don't know about you, but looking at a patch of wild curly fur makes my little knees wobble, but breaking it down into shapes and working bit by bit and analyzing the fur direction within each little shape is a whole lot easier. With our dark shapes shaded, I then define the darker areas more by going in with a second layer of the same colour before shading the light sections with that same initial grey colour. So at this stage you should have dark sections which have two layers and light tones which will have one layer of coloured pencil. Now let's define those dark tones even more and for this I like to use a Payne's grey and all we're going to do is use a gentle pressure and go over the areas that contain the two layers of coloured pencil so your darkest tones. We're taking the same method as before working shape by shape and analysing the fur direction within each of those shapes. Start off with the darkest parts, which are generally the outer edges of the shape, the parts where other fur overlaps or intersects or any areas where the fur is close to the skin. And you want to follow the curvature of the shape and the fur. Layer up a couple of times to get a nice dark tone and then start to blend the tone out into the light areas by lifting the pressure off the pencil. Only work a little way into the light tones at this point though. What we're aiming to do here is create vivid light and dark tones, so try and preserve as much of the light tone as you possibly can. You want to work your way across each shape and make sure you really analyse the fur, the direction and those key dark points. Once you've worked over a couple of shapes, you will see the fur really start to pull together and the directions of each shape should be visible and apparent. If they're not, then you need to work on it some more and really study the shapes and the fur direction and apply that to each of your clumps or sections. I like to go in and blend with a white pencil at this point so that everything looks really nice and smooth and I keep the same technique of working section by section and following that direction of the fur. We're going to add another layer of Payne's Grey now into those dark tones once more and really darken up those key areas. At this stage I like to look at the reference as a whole and see where the darkest points are in comparison to each individual section. Once I've got those in my mind, I work section by section again, gently layering and building the super duper dark tones. I also use a white pencil to blend every now and then just to keep everything nice and smooth. If the dark tones need pushing even further, switch to a dark sepia and work in the same way. As you darken even more, this will really push the light toned areas and you'll start to see a really nice contrast build. That's what is really key for curly fur, just building that contrast. 
As you're working through the sections and building that dark tone, layer and blend ever so slightly into the lighter tones once again using the lightest of pressures and blend with the white pencil so you get a really nice transition from dark into light. And I find that adding in fur lines in the direction of the fur and the shape starts to bring it to life as well and really dictates the direction of each little curl that you're working on. Your light tones should still only have that initial light layer and a small amount of soft tapered dark tones so that's what we're going to work on last to bring the fur together. Switch back to some lighter tones and work on each light section in the direction of the fur just gently shading back and forth. This not only adds a bit of colour and tone to the light section but it also blends everything out at the same time so you have a really nice smooth soft curls and waves. The light tones only need a few layers and colours added so don't overdo it and try not to use a heavy pressure as well to add too much pigment down to your paper. I also like to go in with a few blue tones to help add that little bit of shine to the fur. A sky blue and a dark indigo used really lightly are wonderful at achieving this and just gently shaded from the dark tones and gently worked into the light tones and you'll create a really nice effect. Next we need to add the flyaway and a wild element of curly fur and it's time to add in those stray hairs. There's often a mixture of light and dark flyaway hairs so use both a white pencil and a dark sepia. For this you don't necessarily want to work in the direction of each fur clump but rather in the opposite direction and you really want to cross over almost sort of interrupting the flow of each curl in each section and you want to create some long lines and some short lines and just kind of go a little bit free with it at this point and doing this just adds a really tight curly look to the texture which is perfect. You can use the techniques I've explained here with any colour of curly fur, not just black like I've demoed here. You just want to remember to develop your darks first and then develop your light and mid tones. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the other fur videos in this series like creating white fur and that troublesome brindle technique. Make sure you leave a like and hit that sub button if you're new here and you want to see more coloured pencil content. I upload new videos every single Friday for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!